The following program is made possible by a grant from Pan American Life Insurance Company. It's Varsity Quiz Bowl, and today, Michael Spanier, Rennie Truitt, Joyce Banerjee, and Steve Madair from Hanville High School. We'll meet in a battle of quick recall, Ravi Sharma, Carrie Lewis, Charles Barnes, and James Richards from East Jefferson High School. The alternate from Hanville is Allison III, and the coach, Rose Matthew. And the alternate from East Jefferson is Rosary Fazan, and the coach, Julie LeBourgeois. And now, here's our moderator, Mel Levin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Welcome once again to Varsity Quiz Bowl. We have now entered the round of 16, and today's winner between East Jefferson and Hanville automatically moves on to the quarterfinals as it narrows down even further. Let me introduce, before we start, our judge for today's activities, Peggy Scott Laborde, who incidentally was a captain of her uh, Quiz Bowl team mm, some years ago. She is the editor of the WIES Program Guide and our scorer and timer, and she has been with us since the beginning of this show on Channel 12, Phyllis Hartley, Associate Director of Records at the University of New Orleans. And this lovely lady is Jenny Lee, who is a local radio personality, and Jenny will be doing the recognizing for our show. Let's have a warm round of welcome <laughs> for all three ladies. As we move right into this round of 16 match, East Jefferson, Hanville, ready? Here we go. This is going to be a visual face-off, and we're leading up to a land yap of some 20 points. We'd like you to look at the monitors in front of you right now, and you'll see the self-portrait of a famous French painter of the post-impressionist movement. He was the leader of a group of artists who were known as synthesists and symbolists. Some of his best-known works were painted in Tahiti. Where Richard's he East Jefferson. Gauguin. Correct, it was Paul Gauguin. East Jefferson's on the board now, and we have a chance to pick up 20 more, gentlemen. Listen to the song we're about to play, and then I'm going to ask some questions. Here we go. Some say love, it is a river that drowns the tender reed. Some say love... All right. The singer of this song, The Rose, Won a Grammy Award this year for five points. First, can you name her? Bette Midler. Correct. For another five, in what category did she win her Grammy? And be specific. Remember, they have a very specific breakdown of categories according to types of singers. Um, best female uh, vocalist pop. That's right. <coughs> Not in the same order, but it's the same <laughs> idea. Best pop female vocalist. We've got to accept it. For an additional five points, who wrote this song that we just heard? Huh? Bette Midler. No, Amanda McBroom was the author. And for a final five, whose life is the motion picture The Rose loosely patterned after? Janis Joplin. That's correct. You got three of the four, and that's 15 more points for East Jefferson. <laughs> All right, teams. East Jefferson, Hanville. Here's a face-off going for a lane up at 20 points. This B vitamin is necessary for the use of amino acids in the body and for the proper functioning of the nervous system. It's also a cofactor for enzymes. It's yellow in color. It is found especially in liver, fish, bananas, whole grains, and peanuts. For 10 points, name this vitamin, also known as B2. Sharma East Jefferson. Um, niacin. No, I'm afraid that's incorrect. Hanville, can you take it? Must ring in. Banerjee, Hanville. Riboflavin? That's correct, for 10 points. Hanville's on the board. Trailing now 25-10. Got a chance to pick up 20 more. Could go ahead, Hanville. It reads in part... This, His Majesty's government view with favor the establishment in Palestine of a national home for the Jewish people. It being clearly understood that nothing shall be done which may prejudice the civil and religious rights of existing non-Jewish communities in Palestine, end quote. For five points each, name this document, then tell me the year in which it was issued. The peace document in 1947. No, this was the Balfour Declaration, to be specific. It was issued in 1917. We have two more questions. For an additional five points each, tell me in what year the League of Nations endorsed the Declaration and the year in which the independent state of Israel was established. It was in 1948 and it was 1923. Okay, 
1923 for the uh, World League of Nations, and Israel became a state in 48. Israel was established in 48, that's correct. And I'm sorry, we're off one year on the other. The establishment was 1922, that is, the endorsement was by the League of Nations. You picked up five more points, huh, Neil? Here's another face-off. We're going for a land up at 30 points. It is the title of a five-act play, an epic poem, and the name of Spain's national hero. For 10 points, what is it? Banner Jihadlo. Um, Don Quixote? No. East Jefferson, can you take it? Louis East Jefferson. I'll see it. That's right. El Cid is the name. We have a land yap of 30 points. The Roosevelt era, known as the New Deal, brought a number of groups of words into our vocabulary, giving them a special meaning that has endured. For 10 points each, I'll describe them. You give me the popular expression. First, the special session of Congress from March 9th to June 16th, 1933. Lame duck. No, this is referred to as the first 100 days. Mm. Number two, for 10 more. The group of special advisors to the president without official position. Kitchen cabinet. No, this was another group under a previous president. Uh, his were called the Brain Trust, the Brain Trust. The policy of assistance without intervention in South America was called what? It was called the good neighbor policy, good neighbor policy. We'll move along now to another face off. We're leading toward a, a land up at 25 for a quick 10 points. What's the name of the science that deals with the production, distribution, and consumption of goods and wealth and with the related problems of labor? Banerjee Hanvil. Economics. That's the name. Economics for 10 points. <laughs> Trailing now by 10 points, 35-25, and you have a chance to pick up as much as 25 more. Most sports have a hall of fame. They're located in a specific place. For five points each, name the town and state in which you'd find the following halls of fame. First, professional baseball. Where is it? Cooperstown, New York. That's correct for five. For five more, and you could tie with this one. College basketball is located where? The Hall, hall of Fame. Springfield, Ohio? No, it's Springfield, Massachusetts. I'm sorry. Professional football. Ohio. Canton, Ohio. That's correct, and that ties you up. All right, tennis. We've got two more for five each. Tennis. Washington, New York. Uh, Flushing Meadows, New York. No, it's in Newport, Rhode Island. And for a final five points, which could put you ahead, tell me where the Hall of Fame for Great Americans is located. New York, New York City. That's right. And you go ahead. Very good. You picked up 15 points. Heimville is leading 40 to 35. Here's another face-off going for a land up at 20. The Treaty of Paris ended the Revolutionary War. For 10 points, name the treaty which ended the Thirty Years' War. What was that treaty? Energy Hanvil. Treaty of Runnymede. <laughs> no, no, I'm afraid not. Uh, East Jefferson, can you take it? Anyone want to take a shot? It's the Treaty of Westphalia. Treaty of Westphalia. Another face off. Due to recent events, there's much discussion about the uh, succession to the presidency. According to the 25th Amendment, who are the first four people in what order? Richards East Jefferson. Vice President, sec uh, Vice President, Speaker of the House, Majority Leader in Senate and minority leader. No, I'm afraid that's incorrect. Can you take it, Hanville? Banerjee Hanville. Vice President, Speaker of the House, President Pro Temp of the Senate, and Secretary of Defense. Oh, just off. It was correct it, until you got to Secretary of the Defense. The, the fourth is the Secretary of State. Mr. Haig thought it was third, I believe, <laughs> or second even. <laughs> All right, we have a buzzer, and that means we're going to move into our uh, rapid fire round. As you know, in rapid fire, we ask the questions as quickly as they're answered. If you answer correctly, it's 10 points. Incorrect is a minus five. Only one answer per question, please. There's no referral in this process, and we have a countdown round that lasts exactly two minutes, and then the buzzer will, will sound again. Today's rapid fire is based on general knowledge of people, places, and things. All of the answers must begin with the letter D. D is as in darn or something. <laughs> Here we go. Number one, the fifth book of the Bible. Lewis East Jefferson. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Correct. Deuteronomy. Number two, in Britain, the feminine equivalent of sir is what? Banerjee Hanville. Dame. Correct. American labor leader and founder of the American Socialist Party. His name was Debs Eugene. He wrote under the pen name of Lewis Carroll. Banerjee Hanville. Dodson. That's correct. Leading Spanish painter of the surrealist. Richard Easter. Dolly. Correct. 
colloquial name for arachnids, also called harvest men and harvest... That is Jehanvo. Daddy Long Legs? That's right. Where Jane Austen's Darcy lived. It was in the town of Derbyshire. Irish political leader and former president of the illegal Sinn Féin government. What was his name? Anyone remember? Later president of Ireland. De Valera, De Valera, Eamon. The capital of Syria. Lewis East Coast, <laughs> Damascus. Correct. American poetess, author of Bolts of Melody. Strategy Hanvo. Dickinson. Correct. Founder of the autocracy, the governmental system of the so-called later Roman Empire. His name was Diocletian, an opera in two acts by Mozart with a libretto by Lorenzo de Ponte. The opera was Don Giovanni, inseparable friend of Pythias. Strategy Hanvo. Damon. Right. Bavarian market town, site of a Nazi concentration camp was Dachau, term frequently employed to denote the first part of the Middle Ages before the 11th century. Richard T. Jefferson. Dark Ages. That's right. Great-grandson of Ruth and Boaz, son of Jesse, second king of Israel in the Bible. Louis East Jefferson. David. Right. Region along the Adriatic coast of Yugoslavia, part of Croatia. It's called Dalmatia in mythology, builder of the labyrinth in Crete. His name was Daedalus, the location of the most celebrated oracle of ancient Greece. Louis East Jefferson. Yeah. That's right. The Greek god of wine and vegetation. Energy Dionysius. That's right. British prime minister under Queen Victoria and author Energy of Lord. Really. That's right. In finance, we will get to that one. All right, the buzzer has concluded our rapid fire round. We're going to pause here, take a little break, and be back in just a moment to talk to the youngsters about what they like to do in their spare time. The score, Hanville 110, East Jefferson 95, and that is close. State. <laughs> I'm Roger Ebert, co-host of Sneak Previews, your weekly guide to the new movies. And next time on Sneak Previews, Gene Siskel and I will devote the entire program to a movie lover's fantasy. Movies we would show if we owned our own movie theater. We'll show you scenes from some little-known but excellent movies that we think deserve a second chance at the box office. So join us for this special show of We Owned a Movie Theater next time on Sneak Previews. See it Sunday evening at 10 on Channel 12. We're back again, and we'll continue to play in a moment. Right now, we'd like to talk to the individuals on our two teams about their, what, hobbies and pastimes, and extracurricular activities. I got that out without slurring. Michael, what do you like to do um, in your spare time? I'm in the band at my school where I play the French horn. Great. And I'm in the beta and science club, and I'm also in the yearbook staff, and uh, my interests are in aerospace and aviation. You've got a lot of interests. Ready? Yeah. Well, uh, I'm the editor of my school yearbook. Uh, president of the Drama Club, Public Relations Officer, Student Advisory Committee. I'm um, in the Library Club. I was an intern to Senator Johnson, tennis team manager. <laughs> uh, the Science Club. Occasionally I find time to sleep, and that's that's my real favorite hobby. <laughs> Wait, ask son. Does he go to school? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Joyce, how about you? Well, I'm head of the program committee in our local beta club, and I'm district secretary in District 1 Beta Club. I'm editor of the literary magazine. I'm the drum major in the band, and our symphonic band yesterday went to a festival, and they got straight ones. We're going to state because we're a sweepstakes winner. We got all superior that. ratings. That's great. And I just enjoy writing and music and reading. And life in general. Steve, how about you? I'm in the Beta Club, the 4-H Club, and the choir, which just last week went to a Florida World <coughs> National Festival in Orlando. And I'm in a band, and I'm interested in the astronomy and aerospace sciences. And I play the bone, the guitar, and the piano. Wow. I'll applaud you. <laughs> Bunch of dull kids, huh? <laughs> Same goes for these guys, I know. Ravi, how about you? What do you do to amuse yourself in your well, spare time? I'm president of National Honor Society, I'm a, and I'm a member of the New Alpha Theta Math Honor Society. and. Um, my interests are computers and math. Very good. That's great. There's a future in that, too. I'm sure you're going to pursue it. Carrie, how about you? Um, I'm secretary of NHS and historian of Muaf Theta. And I participate in academic games, and I just like to write. I like to, I like Very to good. Write. And also captain of the East Jefferson <laughs> High School team, which is an honor in itself. Charles? Um, executive officer of the Junior ROTC unit, deputy drill team commander, vice president of Muaf Theta. I'm on the soccer team. <laughs> <laughs> And I coach soccer for seven through nine year olds. Oh, you do? That's terrific. James, how about you? Uh, I'm the editor of the school newspaper. I'm the vice president for the Key Club. I uh, enjoy playing all the sports and finding time for anything else. <laughs> 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 
I think these guys may run the state when they're through. East Jefferson, beautiful. <laughs> Needless to say, I'm sure everybody shares my feeling, I'm impressed with these young people, all of them on this show, and uh, this group here, we wish a great deal of luck. Let's begin the second half of play now. We've got a face-off, we're going for a land yap of 20 points. It looks like, it tastes like, it smells like tuna. It only costs 49 cents for a seven ounce can in some supermarkets, as compared to $1.37 for a like-size can of tuna. For 10 points, what is it? Banerjee Hanvo. Salmon. No, East Jefferson. Richards, East Jefferson. Shark. No, actually it's called Pilchard. Now this is a fish that's been running the, the uh, Atlantic near France for years and years, uh, the younger sardines. But Pilchard is what it is, it gives you this bargain. We'll have another face off and we're going for a lanyap of 20 points. For a quick 10 now, and listen to this closely. In baseball or softball, how many outs are there in each inning? Richard East Jefferson. Six. That's right. Two sides have to bat. Sometimes people miss that one and it's picked up, you pick up 10 points. That's kind of de designed to suck you in because you could say three very easily. That'd be only one side of land. You have a 20 points coming up. East Jefferson, Johann Sebastian Bach's Brandenburg Concertos are well-known classical compositions. Other compositions have also gained renown by name rather than by number. We'd like you to identify for 10 points apiece the composers of the following. We'll give you the name of the symphony. Number one, Symphony Patatique. The Patatique. Anyone want to take a shot? Composed by Tchaikovsky. The Unfinished Symphony. Composer was Schubert. The Scotch Symphony. Composer was Mendelssohn. And finally, the Surprise Symphony. Mozart? No, this was uh, Papa Haydn. We'll move along to another face-off. We're going for a landing up at 20. For 10 points, teams, what tale tells about the loves of the son of the Emperor of Japan and was written by Lady Murasaki Shikibu? Richard East Jefferson. Tale of the Genie? The Genie? Uh, we're going to have to stop there. Tale of the Genie, I believe it's... All right, we're going we're gonna to accept that. Judge says, fine, you got it. I'm trying to interpret my card to speak Japanese for me. It just sat there. All right, you got to land half of 20 points. One of the most nominated films in the Academy Awards this year was Raging Bull, the story of a famous boxer which revolves around his life in the ring and out of it. For 10 points, name the man who's the subject of the film. For another 10 points, name the actor who portrays him in the movie. Okay, it's uh, LaMotta by, uh, and Robert De Niro. That's right. Jake LaMotta, the boxer. Robert De Niro portrayed him. You have 20 more points. East Jefferson. <laughs> this is still a very, very tight game. East Jefferson, 135. Hanville, 110. Another face-off. We're going for a land yap at 20. This is a quickie. For a quick 10 points, tell me, how many tons are there in a megaton? Managing Hanville. 1,000? No, I'm afraid that's incorrect. East Jefferson. Charmer, East Jefferson. Jefferson. One million. One million is correct. <laughs> East Jefferson, you have a 20-point land yap in two parts. Eight Misbehaven started as an intimate review in a small off-Broadway room and rode its infectious high spirits all the way to a Broadway success. For 10 points, to what well-known musician is this musical a tribute? Eight Misbehaven. Scott Joplin. No, this was Fats Waller. Secondly, for an additional 10, to whom does the current sophisticated ladies pay homage? Sophisticated ladies. It's to Duke Ellington who composed the song, Sophisticated Lady. We'll move on to another face-off, going for a land yap at 20 points. For 10 points, name the Democratic nominee for President of the United States in 1864, who ran against Abraham Lincoln and was defeated. He was a Union general during the Civil War and served briefly as Commander-in-Chief. Can you tell me his name? His name was George Brenton McClellan. Another face-off for 10 points. Tell me the colloquial name for the stock buffoon who wears black and blue and is beaten by Harlequin for his boasting Man, and... Hanville. Punch. No, we'll repeat now for East Jefferson. No consultation must ring for 10 points. Tell me the colloquial name of the stock buffoon who wears black and blue and is beaten by Harlequin for his boasting and cowardice. 
Anyone know his name? Richard East Jefferson. Chester. Mm, no, his name was Scaramooch. Another face off for a quick 10. If a doctor gave you three pills, listen to this closely, doctor gave you three pills and told you to take one every half hour, how long would the pill... Charmaine East Jefferson. One hour. That's right, one hour. <laughs> Trick there being that the countdown would begin after you took the first pill. Another lanyard of 20 points, East Jefferson. The Nile River begins deep in Africa, more than 2,000 miles south of the Mediterranean Sea. At Khartoum, the White Nile and Blue Nile converge to form the Nile River that flows through Egypt. For 10 points apiece, tell me the source of the White Nile and the source of the Blue Nile. All right, we'll give you just so much time now, Captain, for consultation. Yes. Um, the white one is Lake Victoria. That is correct for 10. For 10 more, the Blue Nile. It emanates uh, at Lake Ethiopia, or Lake Tana, as it's often called. You have 10 points, East Jefferson. <laughs> Another face-off. We're going for a landing up at 20 points, teams. For 10 points, tell me to which great mathematician and inventor is the following quotation attributed. Quote, give me a firm spot on which to stand, and I will move the Earth. Richard East Jefferson. Archimedes. That's correct. <laughs> Archimedes. Your lips said yes, yes, but your head said no, no, but one way or another, it's what we hear that counts. You got a 20-point land yet. Listen to the following quotation from a poem by a noted Irish poet. Quote, at a small cabin built there of clay and wattles made, nine bean rows will I have there, a high for the honeybee, and live alone in the bee loud glade. Or glade. For 10, uh, ten points each, name the poet who wrote those lines and the poem from which they were taken. Yeats. That's right, for 10. Can you name the poem? We'll ask for an answer. It's the Lake Isle of Innisfree. You've picked up 10 more points, East Jefferson. We have another face-off. We're going for a land yap at 25. The Merovingians were the first line of Frankish kings. For 10 points, name the line that succeeded them. After the Merovingians came what? True at Handel. The Carolinians? That's correct. You have 10 points. You have a lanyap of 25 points, five points apiece. Name the man or the team who holds each of the following National Football League records. Number one, NFL championship team for the most seasons. The most seasons. Who has the record? Uh, the Green, Bay. Green Bay. Green Bay. Green Bay Packers. Green Bay is correct. You don't have to tell the number of years. We'll have to move along now. 11 seasons, incidentally. Second, most touchdowns lifetime. What individual scored the most touchdowns? George Blanda. No, this was Jim Brown, 126. Most points lifetime. I asked for an answer. Senator Brown? No, this was George Blanda, 2002. Most yards gained passing in one game. Individual game record was Norm Van Brocklin, 554. Finally, most consecutive regular season victories. Remember, it's regular season. Miami Dolphins? No, they had a consecutive streak that was longer, perhaps, but the Bears had the most consecutive regular season, 17. What do we have in that, lady? One of them, five more points. Five points for Hanville High. We'll move on now to another face-off. We're going out for a land yet with 30 points coming up. The Aswan High Dam is located 400 miles south of Cairo, Egypt, and it's three miles wide, the height of four football fields. For 10 points, tell me the name of the lake formed as a result of the dam that stretches south for 340 miles into the Republic of Sudan. What is the lake that it created? It's called Lake Nasser. Lake Nasser. Another face-off. In 1946, Jordan became an independent kingdom. For 10 points, what nation ruled that country just prior to that year? Benjamin Britain? Correct. For 10 points. Great Britain it is. Put 10 on the board is a chance to pick up 30 more. The Soviet Union is made up of a number of republics. For five points each, name the Soviet Republic with the following capitals. Number one, Riga, capital of what republic? Latvia. Correct. For five. For five more, Minsk. Minsk is the capital. Or All right. Or Minsk. No, it's Bielorussia or White Russia. Kiev. Kiev. What Ukraine. republic? Ukraine. Correct. Yerevan. E-R-E-V-A-N. Estonia. Oh, Georgia. This is the Republic of Armenia. How about Tallinn, T-A-L-L-I-N-N? -N? Georgia. No, this is Estonia. Finally, Vilnius. Lithuania. Vilnius? 
Lithuania, did you say? Yes. Correct, you are. And we've got 10 more points. We'll move on to another face-off. Going for a land, you have a 25 in nature. In nature, diamond is the hardest mineral substance. For 10 points, name the second hardest, the second Charles hardest Jefferson. of all. Graphite. No, I'm afraid that's incorrect. Can you take it, Hanville? Anyone? Vanity, Hanville. Platinum? No, actually, it's Corundum. Corundum. We have another face-off. Istanbul, the largest city in Turkey, lies at the crossroads of Europe and Asia on a trade route that's been in existence for centuries. It was once called Constantinople, but in ancient times bore a different name. For 10 points, what's the ancient name for Istanbul? Istanbul, what? True at Hanville. Byzantine? Byzantine? No, I'm afraid that's incorrect. The ancient Lewis name was... Byzantinium. No, I'm afraid you're all around it. It's a tough one. Byzantium is the correct name. The Byzantine Empire emanated from it. Another face-off. Jupiter is the largest of all the planets. For 10 points, what is the densest? The densest planet of all. Managy Hanville. Mercury? No, I'm afraid that's incorrect. East Jefferson, can you take it? Richard East Jefferson. Saturn. No, it's Earth. Another face-off. Listen very carefully. For 10 points, name the only film in Academy Award history to make a clean sweep of all the awards presented Managy at that... Managy Hanville. Ben-Hur? No, I'm afraid it's incorrect. Lewis East Jefferson. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. No, I'm afraid not. It was it happened one night. They had only four awards presented at that time, 1934. It won them all. Another face-off for 10 points. Name the literary device of which the following line written by the Roman poet Marshall is an example. Live for today, tomorrow. Gotta say, live for today, tomorrow is too late. You could amend it to after the buzzer is too late. We just ran out of time. Well, we're gonna validate our final score and then we'll be back in just a few moments. And uh, we'll name our winner, the team that'll advance to the quarterfinal. Beneath the sea lie mysterious shapes and littered cargo from the sunken ships of antiquity. And what of Atlantis? Does it too lie drowned in the Aegean? Object of search since Plato first described it. Is it fiction? Or is it the shadowed memory of a remote actual event? reshaped by human imaginings. See it Sunday evening at 8 on Channel 12. We're back again, and here's the final score. It's official. East Jefferson High School, 185. Hanville High School, 140. East Jefferson, you're the winner. Congratulations. <laughs> the Warriors have come true. And we're kind of... Sad to see Hanville eliminated, but uh, we know at least one member will be back. Who's, who's going to be back next year? Two of them. That's right. Mr. Madair, Ms. Ms. Banerjee, and they'll be returning for a fine Hanville team that has won many, many games here on Varsity Quiz Bowl. Nice having you with us, gang. We'll see you next year, huh? Okay. East Jefferson. Now you're up there in that select round known as the quarterfinals. And in uh, our elimination tournament game plan, you will meet Newman School in May in what should be a real titanic contest. We'll see you then. We hope to see you again next Saturday. Goodbye, all. The questions of Varsity Quiz Bowl are prepared and authenticated by the WIES editorial research staff and known only in advance to the Quizmaster, producer, judge, and researcher. All 64 schools participating in our year-long tournament are matched by blind draw. Selections of team members and methods of preparation are the sole responsibility of the schools and their coaches. The preceding program was made possible by a grant from Pan American Life Insurance Company.